Ionic hydrohalogenation is the addition of HX, namely HCl, HBr, or HI, across a pi bond. The mechanism begins with the protonation of the pi bond, which results in the formation of a carbocation. The halide then attacks the carbocation, yielding an alkyl halide as the reaction product. In this specific example, the alkene substrate is symmetrical, so it does not matter which alkene carbon acquires the proton in the protonation step, because protonation at either alkene carbon will ultimately yield the same carbocation intermediate and the same product due to the molecule's symmetry. The reaction begins with the attack of the pi bonding electrons on the proton as chloride dissociates from the proton. This yields a carbocation intermediate, and chloride attacks the carbocation to yield the alkyl chloride reaction product. When the alkene substrate is unsymmetrical, as it is in this reaction, protonation occurs so as to yield the more stable carbocation. This usually results from using Markovnikov's rule, which states that the carbon of the alkene that has more hydrogens acquires the new hydrogen, which is the electrophile in this case. It's always important to double check, though, by analyzing the stability of the carbocation, because conjugation can be a complicating factor, and Markovnikov's rule is not an absolute. In the following example, the protonation can yield either a primary or a tertiary carbocation, so the reaction does indeed follow Markovnikov's mnemonic so as to provide the tertiary carbocation, which is then attacked by bromide to yield the alkyl bromide reaction product. Stereochemistry may sometimes be a concern. Since two carbons of the reactant are involved in this transformation, it is possible for no stereocenters to be formed, or for one or two stereocenters to be formed during the reaction. In this specific example, the protonation of the alkene does not lead to the generation of a stereocenter. This center has two hydrogens connected to it, and so it is therefore not stereogenic. However, when bromide attacks the carbocation, a new stereocenter is formed. Since the carbocation is trigonal planar, or flat, it may be attacked from either side. Bromide may attack from above to yield this stereoisomer, or from below to yield this stereoisomer. The result is a mixture of both configurations at that new stereocenter, which in this case affords a racemic mixture of enantiomers. In this next specific example, two stereocenters will ultimately be formed from the reaction of this particular alkene substrate with HCl. On this slide, let's simply consider the protonation step. The alkene pi bonding electrons attack the proton as chloride dissociates. As we decide where to place the proton, it's important to notice that this substrate contains a deuterium atom. Deuterium is an isotope of hydrogen. Chemically, it's going to behave like a hydrogen, but it can be differentiated from a hydrogen. So in this instance, as we protonate, we have the opportunity to create a secondary carbocation or a tertiary carbocation. We want to produce the more stable tertiary carbocation, and so the hydrogen is added to the same carbon that bears the deuterium. As we do this, however, we generate a stereocenter because hydrogen and deuterium can be distinguished. Since the alkene has trigonal planar geometry and both of its carbons are flat, the proton may be added from below 
or from above to generate both carbocations A and B, which are stereoisomers of one another. In the second step of this reaction, chloride, acting as a nucleophile, will attack the tertiary carbocation to yield alkyl chloride products. However, the carbocation is flat. It has trigonal planar geometry. And so as chloride attacks, it may attack from underneath or from above, generating both configurations at the new stereocenter that is formed. It's also important to note that this attack from below or from above can occur on both carbocations A and B. And therefore, we ultimately form a mixture of four stereoisomeric products labeled C through F. In this instance, we'll notice that alkyl chlorides C and F are enantiomers of one another. Notice how they have the opposite configuration at each and every stereocenter. Alkyl chlorides D and E are enantiomers of one another. Notice how they too have the opposite configuration at each and every stereocenter. Any other comparison of the alkyl chloride products will be diastereomeric in nature. Since the hydrohalogenation of alkenes involves a carbocation intermediate, carbocation rearrangement is a possibility. In this specific example, the alkene is first protonated so as to generate the more stable secondary carbocation. However, that secondary carbocation resides next to a quaternary carbon. This carbon is more highly substituted, and therefore a carbocation at that location would likely be more stable. A 1,2 methyl shift causes one methyl group to migrate to where the carbocation used to be, and therefore, the carbocation also migrates to this new center, which is tertiary. A more stable carbocation is formed. Chloride then attacks the carbocation, yielding the final alkyl chloride reaction product. In summary, ionic hydrohalogenation adds HX across a pi bond with Markovnikov regiochemistry. If stereocenters are formed during the reaction, both configurations will be produced at any new stereocenter because all of the reactive sites are trigonal planar or flat, and so the new groups may be added from either above or below. Carbocation rearrangement is also a possibility during this reaction. The preceding was an excerpt from the book Introductory Organic Reaction Mechanisms, A Color-Coded Approach to Arrow Pushing. If you found this video to be helpful, you may be interested in the complete book, which is available in ebook format from Scribd, in paperback format from Amazon, or in paperback at a discounted price from Lulu.